Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. Now, I don't usually talk about health matters, but I just wanted to let you know I have not posted any videos for a while as I had to go in for some thyroid surgery and then I brought home this nice bad flu from the hospital. Ugh. Anyways, I was getting bored and so I started knitting Socks the Cat. So here they are, Socks the Cat with a cute little tail. It's an easy knit for beginners and I have gone step by step in the video so you can follow along. And this is not my pattern, it's by Yardspirations. And I've included the link in the pattern so you can just print it out and follow along that way. And I also have all the supplies in the description box below this video. So follow along and let's knit Socks the Cat and his buddies together. So this is the pattern by Yarnspirations and this little guy is called Socks the Cat. Now I did follow their instructions but I changed up the yarn size and the needle size mainly being that I have a lot of number four yarn, medium weight yarn and I think that's generally a lot of people have this size of yarn it's very common. And so what I've done also is I always bring down the needle size on the suggested needle size for the yarn. So it is a nice tight knit so you don't see as much as the polyester filling inside. So again, this was a number four yarn and I happen to have three and three quarter millimeter needles. So I'm using those. If you have three and a half, that's fine. If you have four, that's fine. And that was done using your inspirations. I always never know how to pronounce this, I, Karen, Karen, whatever, um, cinnamon swirl cakes. And I basically used the yarn as it came out of the ball from the center here, and it made the stripes like this. Except for the arms and tail, I just um, attached the yarn as I saw fit, so I had more colors in the arms. Otherwise, it would have been all white. So some people are very visual, and so what I've done is I've laid out some pieces of knitted work here for the cat, just so you can see where you're going. So this is the top of the head, up here, and then it comes in, and then we make the bottom of the cat for the legs. And that's what this little part is here, it kind of um, goes into the middle of the body here and you sew that in so it doesn't squish this in too much. And so the same as these ones, this is the end of your tail so you can plan out your colors and the start of your knitting is the end of your little arm here. And this was a great way for me to use up those little bits and pieces of yarn that I had around. And all of these pieces are basically folded in half and you're sewing up the back and that's how it's going to form your cat shape. So all your seams are up the back as well as your tail and as well as your arms. In the actual pattern you'll see that they're using a number one super fine yarn and as I said I'm going to be using a medium four because I just prefer a thicker yarn for toys. So I'm going to start by using the pink for my head of the cat and I'll use that for the end of my paws and my feet and the rest will be in my clothing. And starting with your slip knot any way you want to do it and following the pattern we are going to cast on 20 stitches I do a knitted cast on so you can watch how a knitted cast on is done. If you prefer a different form of cast on, by all means, you go ahead and do whatever form of cast on you prefer. But I will continue on here and I will knit my 20 cast on stitches. And now for our first row, we are just going to knit the whole row. 
So knit stitches all the way across. And your second row is a whole row of pearls. So purl across the row. And for our third row, we're going to be knitting in the front and the back of each stitch. So let's start in the front. There's our front of our stitch. Leave that stitch on the needle. Bring your needle around to the back. Insert into the back of that same stitch. Wrap around. And then you can take that off. I'm hitting my needles on my camera, so it's a little awkward for me, but I'm trying to stay in view. I'll do that again for you. So into the front of the stitch, wrap around. Don't take it off the needle, bring that needle around into the back of the stitch, wrap around, and then that comes off. Okay. So do that for every stitch, and in the end you will have 40 stitches instead of 20. And now that you have your 40 stitches on the needle, you are now going to work rows 4 to 30 in stocking that stitch, which means one row of purl, the next row of knits. And as always, I like to just make up a little guide here because I do get distracted and every time I've knit a row I will just check it off. So we are starting our first row with pearls because we're on our pearl side. And so here we go. My first row will all be pearl stitches right to the end. Finish that row and then the next row will be knit. All right, so we'll see you when I get to row 30. I've knit my 30 rows and now I'm going to change my color and then we're going to start with our decreasing. When I cut my yarn, I like to leave some excess so I've got the same color yarn for sewing up any seams. And now I'm going to add my next color with a simple knot. Right over left and left over right. And then cinch that up so it's up to the needle. And now I'm going to start decreasing with my green color. And for row 31, as the pattern says, we are going to knit one. And then we're going to knit two together. And we're going to do that. 13 times. So that's number one. Let's knit one again and then knit two together. That's our second one. So carry on until you've done that 13 times. Here's my last knit two together. And you'll have just one knit stitch on the end, and you should now have 27 stitches on your needle. Rows 32 to 46 are worked in stocking knit stitch, and so we're going to start with a purl row and then a knit row and carry on till you get to the end of row 46. And starting with a purl row. And being that I want stripes in different colors, I am now going to cut off this yarn and I'm going to add my beige color so we get some stripes in the cat. We've finished row 46 and now we're going to do another increase row. So for row 47, we're going to knit 12. And now we're going to knit in the front and back of the stitch like we did before. There's knitting in the front. 
and without taking it off, come back and knit into the back of the stitch and then just knit one stitch. We're gonna do that one more time, knit into the front, bring it around and knit into the back. Oops. And knit one. And you'll have 11 stitches left on the needle and just knit to the end of the row. And you should now have 29 stitches on your needle. And next row, we're gonna just do purls all across the whole row to the end. I've now changed the color of my yarn again because I wanna continue with my stripes. And for row 49, we are now going to knit 13 stitches. And again, for our increase, we're going to knit in the front, in the back of the stitch, and then just knit one. And we're going to knit in the front and the back once more. And our knit one. And now you're just going to knit to the end of the row. You should now have 31 stitches and for your next row, all purls across the whole row. On to row 51, we are now going to knit 14 stitches and then do our increase again. And again, knit in front and back a stitch. And knit one. And let's do that again. Knit in front and back. And now just knit to the end of the row. We now have 33 stitches and a row of pearls to the end in row 53 for our last little increase. We will now knit 15 and then do our increase. Again, knit in front and back. Knit one. And knit in front and back. And knit to the end of the row. We now have 35 stitches. And now you're doing one row of purl. Finish that row and then you'll do one row of knit. And then one row of purl again. And I'll See you when I get to that last stitch. And now for row 57, we are going to start decreasing again. So we're going to knit 15 stitches. And we're back to knit two together. Knit one, and let's do that one more time. Knit two together. Knit one, and knit to the end of the row. We'll also do a decrease on the purl side. So this time we're going to purl 14.
and now we're going to purl two together. So taking two stitches, purl two together. And just purl one. And do that one more time. And purl to the end of the row. I've now changed to my pink yarn because I want to have some pink paws. Now row 59, we're going to knit 13 and then do our decrease. And knit two together. Knit one and do that one more time. And knit to the end of the row. Row two together. Just purl one and then again. Purl to the end of the row. And now row 61 to 64, work in stocking and stitch, meaning this whole row will be knits. The next row will be all purl, back to knit, back to purl. And now we get to bind off. Knitting one and knitting two and passing that first stitch over the next one. Continue on until all your stitches have been bound off. Just cut the yarn, bring that in through. And that completes the body. And now we're gonna knit two arms and a tail. And now for the tail, we're gonna cast on six stitches. So go ahead and do that just like before. Oops. And the right side will all be knits. And a row of purl. And a row of increase, so we're going to be knitting in the front and back of every stitch, making 12 stitches in total. And now knitting rows 4 to 34 in stocking it stitch, starting with a purl row, and then the next row will be a knit, next row purl, next row knit, and so forth. And for this tail, I'm going to leave it all in pink because I'm going to think of that as being part of his body because I put his head in pink and the end of his arms and his bottom feet all in pink. So I thought I'd make the tail all pink as well. So I'm going to continue on in stocking and stitch here and then I will get back to you when I'm ready to bind off. And we now have an all pink tail, and we're just ready to bind off this one. Then I'll just do a quick explanation on the arms, because they're done exactly the same as the tail, except we'll add a few more stripes to, to join in for his little sweater. They've done exactly the same as the tail. You'll start by casting on six stitches. Here's our six. And then you're going to knit one row, just like the tail. and purl one row. And 
and then for row three you're going to knit in the front and the back of each of these stitches to form 12 stitches. So do that to each stitch, knit front and back. And then once you've got your 12 stitches, you're then working in stocking at stitch from row 4 to 16. You're going to purl a row, knit a row, purl a row until you get to row 16, and then you're going to bind off. Starting with the purl row for my row 4. And bind off as always. And when you finish this guy, make one more. And now let's sew up our little cat. So using a nice big eyed needle, so you can get your yarn through the eye of the needle, darning needle. And we're putting wrong sides together. And I'm looking for where my cast off, or actually my cast on actually, right here. And it matches up to there. So I'm just going to join those two together first. And then I'm going to just push this down like so, because we're going to sew up. So this seam is in the back of the cat. So now that we've found our middle, we can just come up this way. And then looking for the back side of the stitch, I'm going to come into the back side here, come into this one, and then over to this side, you can see where your back and your front of the stitch is. So I'm going to come into the back of this stitch. Cinch it up again looking for the back of the stitch in this next one. I'm going to come in here and then looking for the back of the stitch over here. It's actually this one right there. And then you've come in here, so I'm going to come in here. And one more for this side. And we'll take this one here. Once you've got that side sewn up, I'm just going to, because I've got some more yarn here I can use, I'm just going to slip this yarn through some of these stitches here. So it comes up on the other side here. Like so, okay. So now, I'm sorry about my voice, it's, I've still got a cold. And we're going to come through again, looking for the back side of the stitches. And when you get to your last stitch, just come in and put your needle through that loop and that will help to tie it off. And maybe just do one more to secure it. And then just bring that through your yarn again, just through some of your stitches here and then cut it off. Before you sew up the back, you want to be able to place your safety eyes on if you're using them, or you can just embroider your eyes on with a satin stitch. The ones I'm using, I believe, are 12 millimeter, and 12 millimeter is kind of sort of like almost half an inch or that would be about 2.5 centimeters. 
from the top where your actual solid knitting is instead of the part where you've sewed it together count down about six rows so there's one two three four five six so just poke it doesn't really matter where right now you're just kind of poking it in for now and then you can readjust when you're happy with your position and then do the same just poke it in now just make sure that you're sitting exactly in the middle and making sure that they're sitting at the same level. And I'm going to make it so this one's coming over a bit more. So I'll just come into the next one here and down just slightly. And I'm going to work it so we've got approximately one, two, three, four rows in between the two eyes. And once you're happy with your placement, you can just turn this over to the other side. And then you're going to be placing the back of your safety eye. You'll see that the part that's pointing up in this, what we're going to call the flat side. So the pointy side is up. And then just place that right over your safety eye and just push down. You'll probably get a couple clicks out of it. So there's one and I'll go one more. Two clicks. Don't get too tight, otherwise it'll suck it right into your knitting. Sorry, I just realized I was out of camera on that. Okay, for this one here, that's your flat side. This is the part that's raised up, so it goes on that way. Pop it over the back of your post and go click one. And click two. And your safety eyes are now on. There you go. Now I've left a nice long tail here that I can use for sewing up. I like to try to use the same color yarn so you don't see the seam as much when you're sewing it up. So let's just bring these together and match it up so your knitting is matched up on both sides. And when you're matched up, then again, we are going to look for the second, not the inside, but the back of the stitch here. And again, on this side, we're going to come into this stitch right here. Okay, and work your way back and forth until you've sewn up this portion of the head. There's your back one, and then again, look for your back on this side. And I find it easiest if I get my finger in here, then I can kind of roll the knitting back, and I can see where I'm at, and I can see where my front and the back of the stitch is. I know I'm coming into this one, and this one here will come into this one. All right, so carry on. And then once you get to your last stitch, just leave a loop so you can create a little bit of a knot. Pull it a little bit tighter, come in there and do that one more time so it's nice and secure. And then once you're not secure, then you can just bring it back through some of those stitches. And trim it off. And there's a nice, neat seam of the back. And going into the back of the stitch. Okay, so what I do is I just look inside here and I try to leave some longer tails so I could um, sew up my different colors and that's what I choose to do is grab the next color and use that color yarn to sew up the seam because then you won't see it and then it will make for a better looking toy. All right so 
So join these ones together again and the same thing going into the back of the stitch. Oops, keep going out of camera, sorry. Okay, so going into the back of the stitch and then over to the next one and then across to the other side into the back. Again, if you need to use your fingers to come in here, find where the back of that stitch is all means and then I'll probably just do one more and then when it's like a little small section like this what I'll do is I'll come down into that next stitch and I'll just bring it right down look inside for my next color here it is here <clears throat> tie these two off and continue like that until you've sewn all the way down to the bottom and at the bottom here I've done my last stitch I'm just going to come into my last stitch on this side and then just tie that off to make sure it's secure because it is a toy. So all this excess in here, you don't really need it. You can push it back up into the toy if you want to, but I generally just cut off all the excess. And then I'll come in and I'll stuff it. Leave one long tail for sewing up the bottom. All right, and just take hunks of your polyester stuffing and get it all the way up to the top of the head. And keep adding more until it's got the amount of stuffing you want in it. And once you've got it all stuffed, making sure that you've got it folded in half of your back seam down the middle. And we'll just close this up. Find your other side and again going through the back of the stitch and just sew it up. And once you've finished this side, just sneak your yarn underneath until you come up on the other side here. And continue sewing up the other side. Once you've got to the end, tuck your yarn back through inside and come up into the middle so we can sew up the legs. Okay, so here's your, find your middle here and you can just push in. Let's start from the back here. Because you can see your seam come up to the front here and make sure you're sewing down the middle. And keep working your way up into the middle of the legs, making sure that you're poking out your needle into the middle in the back.
then bring it to the back. Just make sure it's nicely tucked in. Find a stitch. Fasten it off. Give it a good tug. And then do that one more time. And then once it's tucked in there, bring that yarn through to the bottom, pull it out, give it a good tug to suck it in, and cut it off. And sew up your tail and two arms in the same manner. Uh, sew it up, stuff it, and close up your end, and leave a nice long tail so you can sew it onto the body. And now with black embroidery thread, we're going to use all six strands. Just pull out a couple feet. You've got a fairly large eye. So I just pull it down really hard, slide it off, and then pop it through the eye of the needle. I'm going to make a knot in the end of my embroidery thread by wrapping around my finger like so, and then I just roll it and then pull down, and that makes a knot. We're gonna turn this over, and we're gonna pop it into the back anywhere, and poke it out, and we're trying to get it so we're in the middle. So we've got one, two, three rows, so I'm gonna go in between this row so I'm going to go right about there, just on the bottom of the eyes and in the middle of that one row. And then in the back here, I'm just going to give it a bit of a yank so that kind of gets caught into the polyester stuffing inside, but don't pull too hard, just enough so it stays in there. And now we're going to do a satin stitch, and I'm coming into the middle of this one and then up again to where I was. And I'm thinking this might not be wide enough. We'll have a look and see here. That's one stitch. Let's do one more and see if I like it. I think that'll be okay. So I'm going to continue and do a few more of those. Just to fill it in. So it's nice and solid. And then you can start to make it a little tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to go into the middle of this one and into the middle of this one just to get it a little bit smaller. All right, so for the last stitch, I'm going to come down on this side and then come up right in the middle below my last stitches there. Right in there. And then I'm going to come back down again because it looks like I didn't get quite close enough, so I'm going to come down in, in there again, come further down like so. Let's see how that looks. Okay, and we'll do that once more just to thicken it up, down. And this time we're gonna give this little cat a little bit more of a smile. So I'm gonna come over to here, kind of directly opposite the stitch here, a little bit higher. And then I'm gonna come down in here. And then I'm gonna come up a little tiny bit higher to give him a little bit of a smile. 
And so the stitch is going to come down in here. And I'm going to come over to the left side. And finish the left side of this little smile. And then back down again. And then up a little bit higher. And then back down to finish that off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up close to the top of his little nose, right up in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right underneath this nose as much as I can. Grab some of that yarn so we can tie this off. Go through that loop. Make a little knot. And then once you've made that knot, I'm going to come back through the back of the head here. Don't pull it too tight because you don't want to suck it in. It's just to secure it. And uh, because you've done the knot on the other side, you can just cut that off and you're finished. That one, you can just go like that and pop it out. So here's three different little cute little faces. We've got Grumpy Cat. <laughs> and then we've got, hmm, I'm debating. Do I want to be happy or sad? And then we got Happy Cat. And we need to give them some ears. So we're going to get a piece of yarn that's the same color as your ears. Get your larger eyed needle. And let's uh, sew in some ears. Again, I'm going to make just that quick little knot around my finger by rolling it, pulling down. We've got a nice knot on the end. We're just going to push that into our stuffing anywhere here and then come up about an inch away on the top here and then just pull that in. Don't pull it all the way, just enough to get that to suck into the polyester stuffing to secure it. And now we're just going to come down at an angle. So we're just going to go back and forth and then come back from the back into the front again. And then I'm just going to come back like this just to secure the line the division of the ear and I'm just going to bring it through the top and come out about an inch away again so we can do the other side and now we're going to come down this way and make the other ear. Again, just back and forth. Then I'll just go to the back of the cat here. And then I'm just going to do, find one little stitch here. And we need to give them some whiskers. So I'm using just white embroidered cotton thread. And for his whiskers, I, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I did not get his eyes and face on in the middle of his head. But hey, it gives him more character. That's all right. I just 
mention that just in case you notice it too, going, she didn't put her face in. Her one eye is lower than the other one. Oh boy, this is what happens when you're not feeling well. Oh, it's okay. So to do your whiskers, we want the whiskers to make it so they're coming out this way. So I'm going to come right below the eye here, and we'll do one right here. One, grab that little stitch there. Don't put, pull it all the way through. And then come back through a little bit further down so it's, you've got something to tie on to. And just tie it off with two knots. So they've got a little bit of a knot there. There's one. And do one more knot. Just to give it a little bit of a knobby look at the edge of the whisker. Okay. And you cut that one off. We'll, we'll size them up later. And let's do that again. And again, just making sure that you're tying your, your knot to this side because you want your whiskers to come out that way and cut them off to the length that you want I'm going about an inch <laughs> silly cat and do the same for the other side and for his arms I'm going to sew them in right where it starts to come in where it starts to get smaller so I'm going to put his arm right there and just finding your side, <clears throat> just a matter of going in to your stitches, into your arm, and then grab some more stitches on the actual cap, and just keep going back and forth till it's nice and secure. Okay, I've gone one way, and I'll come back the other way again. And then once you've gone on the top, I like to come on the bottom as well, just to make sure it's good and secure. So just lift it up, and then sew across on the bottom as well. And then once you're happy with how secure it is, again, just find one stitch. And do the same with the other arm. And then sew your tail on about an inch above your legs. So I'm going to put it right about here. And there's Socks the cat with the sweater where we've knit the head in pink and his paws and his feet and his tail. <laughs> Cute. And just letting you know that the sky measures about 11 inches high and about four inches wide. And this guy is closer to 10 inches high and maybe three and a half, well, maybe four. Anyways, what I wanted to note is that all of these were knit with a number four yarn. So when people ask me, can you substitute a yarn, it's really difficult because these are both a number four yarn, but the Karen, 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 whatever, yarn is actually not as heavy as the Craftsmart yarn. But just saying, just so you know, so you get a little bit of a smaller cat with this yarn.